how does a DAC work? Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do my best. This comes from Kofi in Ghana. Hey Paul, my name is Kofi. I'm writing to you from Ghana. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> do DACs really convert digital to analog? And if so, what's the actual mechanism with which this is achieved? I have a toppings DAC. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, anyway, I'm fascinated about how binary digital audio is converted to analog. And thank you. Hope to hear from you soon. Coffee. Well, coffee, I hope this is soon enough. I will do, I've, I've tried this before. And so here's the way I figure things. If I hit a subject enough times, then every time somebody watches it, I, they'll get a little different viewpoint. And if you get enough different viewpoints, you can start assembling a complete picture. So we know that to get a complete picture, one needs many, many pieces. And every time I go through a five minute video and try and explain something, I'll always say it a little bit differently because hey, it's a different day, here I am. Okay, all right. Let's start with the other side of the DAC, the analog to digital converter. Because first we have to get the analog into digits and then we're gonna change the digits back to analog. So how do we do that? Okay, and I'm gonna talk about PCM, pulse code modulation. And there's also DSD, which is similar, better, but most people are thinking in terms of PCM. PCM is what you're listening to right now. PCM is what your computer handles, what your phone handles. It's just the standard way of doing business. It's a uh, business. It's on the um, CD. If you do a CD or anything like that, you, you've got PCM. Okay. We know that analog is the rising and falling of voltage, okay? As I talk, and battle the wind here, as I talk, my voice is producing a series of pressure waves. And those pressure waves get bigger, heavier, uh, greater amounts of pressure as I talk louder, and as I talk very quietly, the, the pressure goes down uh, and Loudly, it goes up. So think of it in terms of uh, like water. You know, if I, if I take a little bit of water and with a little bit of pressure, it kind of comes out and then a lot goes up, right? So what we want to do is we want to measure those pressure waves. How do we do that? Well, if I take this microphone that I'm, I'm speaking into, what it's doing, it simply has a membrane in there. And as I speak, the membrane moves a little bit or a lot. If it's a lot, it moves because that pressure is pushing that membrane in and out um, a lot and very little if it's, if it's soft. When the membrane moves, there's an element, whether it's a magnetic element or whether it's a changing in capacitance, some way that measures the amount of movement of that and converts it into a voltage. A voltage is what comes out of a battery and a voltage has higher and lower amounts. So now we have this rising and falling analog voltage that is the analog or represents the differences in volume of my words. To convert that into something a computer can understand, we need to change it into binary. And binary, by its very nature, its definition, means that it's on or off, binary. So we have ones and zeros. What I think confuses people is how could just ones and zeros represent this complex waveform, right? And the thing, here's the thing to remember. It, 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 it can't alone. It needs other stuff, right? And what's that other stuff? Well, the other stuff is windows, snapshots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a snapshot of this voltage real quick because if the voltage is moving fast, we want to take a quick snapshot, just like you would with a camera. Where's that voltage? Okay. Then we're going to measure that and we're going to measure it and convert it into a number. And the higher the number, the higher the voltage. So quickly, how do computers count? Computers count 
by means of a binary number. And, and, and that, that number is within a, within a window of time. How many of these on-off things are there? Okay, that's a simple way of looking at it. Now we have, and I don't have time to go through a truth table, but we have a counting scheme that says, you know, if, if, if the first one uh, is on or off, that represents a, a one, and the next one uh, is a two, and the next one is a four, and the next one's an eight, and the next one's a 16. And so it, it, this, this counting, and you can look it up. Look up, look up a uh, truth table for how computers count. And you can see that by using just on, off, but knowing where in time or where in the, the string they turn on or off represents big numbers. So we can represent millions, billions of numbers. It's how computers count, it's how they add, how they subtract, all that. It's just this binary counting scheme using these snapshots. So we take these snapshots, we measure the voltage, we convert it to a number, and the louder the voltage, the higher the number. And the opposite is true. Now, all we have to do is, in our little computer, we memorize that stream. Then, to get it out as a DAC, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to have that number represent a voltage. And to do that, there are a number of schemes, but mostly we use what's called a ladder network. That's the simplest way to explain it. So, for each, you take the snapshot, you load this word in, which is a series of these bits, and depending on the counting scheme, it'll turn switches on and off in this ladder. And the ladder has uh, switches, and every time you click a switch in, there's twice the voltage. So a little tiny voltage, double that, double that again, and the more switches you turn on, the higher the voltage. Just, just think of it as click, 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 more and more voltage, turn them off, less voltage. And if we do that quickly enough, as in a movie, which is going which is single snapshots, 24 times a second. When we see it, it looks seamless. It looks like it's moving. Of course, it really isn't. Same thing with digital audio. It isn't moving. It isn't continuous. But if we do it fast enough, then it seems like it's continuous, and it sounds like it's what we started with, analog voltage. I'll keep at it. I hope that helps. Thanks.